in Genesis 24 verse 14. Now let it be that the young woman whom I say, please let down your pitcher that I may drink. And she says, drink, and I will also give your camels a drink. Let her be the one you have appointed for your servant Isaac. And by this, I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. When we go into these partnerships, do we go to God to ask, can you show me that this is the one? You know, pastor gave us a very good example. You are inviting someone to come and speak to your people. Then God says, no, alignment. What if you never consulted? What if you don't hear God? Yeah? So the partnerships that we are entering into, let's inquire of him, the Lord. Amen? Let's go to the third one. Kingdom seed. Kingdom seed. The first one was what? Kingdom success. The second one? The third one now is kingdom seed. Exodus chapter 4, verse 2 to 3. So the Lord said to him, What is in your hand? What is in your hand? He said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent and Moses fled from it. Can you imagine? You know, I, I, I think even Hollywood has not gotten close to the kind of movies that are in, this, in the Bible. Moses fled from it. Yeah? He said he has a what? A rod. What is a rod? In the Israelite culture, the rod was a natural symbol of authority. As the tool used by the shepherd to correct and guide his flock. Moses, in fact, initially carried his rod while tending his sheep. And later it became his symbol of authority over the Israelites. So Moses, at this time, he was a, more of a shepherd, isn't it? Eh? Yes. He was tending to sheep. And his symbol of authority, the most important tool he had was a rod. You know, in today's world, the rod has the significance of the rod. We cannot even identify with it. You know, but those days when you saw someone carrying a rod, it was a symbol of authority. Yeah? It was the most important thing that Moses was carrying, a rod. What did God tell him to do? Cast it on the, cast it on the ground. When he cast it on the ground, it became something else. It became a serpent. It transformed. He actually fled from his own rod. See the drama in it, eh? And when, when, you, when, when you are doing kingdom business, you will face this question. What do you have in your hands? What is in your hands? What is in your hands? And you know, again, because of how the world has corrupted us, we will tend to think it's money, right? What is the thing that gives you authority? What is the thing that people identify you with? What is the gift that, what is the gifting that you have from God? What is the thing that brings honor to you? What is your tool of trade? What's your vehicle of trade? As I was meditating on this, my tool of trade is Nabo Capital. Yeah? What's your platform? Isn't it? Eh? What is your platform? That platform, God says, cast it on the 
Surrender it to me. Surrender it to me. A lot of these platforms, even though we come to church and we do all the nice things, we read the word every day and we do all our things, a lot of our platforms are about us. A lot of our platforms are about enriching ourselves. A lot of our platforms are about buying the big houses, driving the big cars, doing the things that make us happy. They are our symbol of authority. But God says, what do you have in your hands? Cast it to the ground and see what I will do with it. Let it be your seed. I remember 2013 when we started Abu Capital, I invited my friends over to my office. We were just doing the office. And we knelt down and we prayed and we cried to God and we dedicated Nabo Capital to God. We cast it to the ground. We cast it to the ground. We said, this is your vehicle, not our vehicle. It was a Saturday. Many of my colleagues don't even know. But I look back and I see the things that God has done through Nabu Capital. And I go back to that day when we cast it to the ground. It was the seed. A seed is not money. A seed is that most valuable thing, that platform. Is your business cast to the ground? Or is your business to make you guys happy and rich? Have you surrendered it to God as his vehicle? Is he the chairman of that vehicle? Amen? Allow God to use your business for his purpose. Allow God to use your business for his purpose. A God-fearing man is designed to produce godly seed, to produce godly vehicles, godly vessels. A God-fearing man is designed, is wired to produce godly seed or godly platforms. This is a godly platform, this place we stand. And you know what? Actually, I've just remembered, this is such an honor to me to stand here because this is the place where my wife was nurtured in this church. She was a worshiper in this church. She was in the choir in this church. She told me many things. Her foundational years were in this church. I'm a beneficiary of this church. This platform, this seed, I'm a beneficiary. And I married very well. Because <laughs> she was nurtured very well. <laughs> so, I remember her today and I honor. I honor the leadership of this church. I honor you, my good friend and pastor. I'm a beneficiary. Kingdom seed. Number four, kingdom production and multiplication. Kingdom production and multiplication. This is like my favorite. And this is like the climax of, of everything. Everything we've spoken about is laying the ground. The first one was what? Kingdom success. Define kingdom success. Number two was? Kingdom par get into kingdom partnerships. Number three? Kingdom, kingdom seed. Now it's time for production. And this is where we see the hand of God. And, you know, these principles are not just for people in church. Let me just say that. <laughs> yeah? I think where we miss it the most is in production. That's my sense. Where, where many of us have been 
on this spiritual journey, but we are yet to produce tangible, to manifest the results, is in production. Let me read for you something that I had uh, Elon Musk say. I love God how he speaks. He speaks to us through everybody, right? He's not a respecter of persons. He gives us insights, you know. He said, this year some, at some point, I can't remember which date, he said, people get confused. They think that the economy is money. They think that the economy is money. But listen to his, to, to his revelation about money. Money is a database for the exchange of goods and services. And for the shifting of the exchange of goods and services. I'm going to interpret it for you. What he was saying, the richest 1% in the world, who own half of global wealth, they use, they use money to provide goods and services to solve human pain points. Do you understand? The richest 1%, when they look at money, they see money as a raw material to go produce goods and services to solve all our problems. How many people here are on Facebook? So, so it's not for pagans, eh? <laughs> to condone this is what? <laughs> How many people are on WhatsApp? Does it help you? Was it uh, produced by uh, the most born again person? But has it solved your problems? Yes. So we need, even God knows we need it. Eh? <laughs> the perspective of money is very different for them. Let's see, what is the perspective of money for the rest of us? The rest of us use money to pay bills and indulge in entertainment. <laughs> them they produce as we consume. What is the use of the seed? It's production. Isn't it? Eh? It's production. Wealth creation, which we also call multiplication, is an art of production. So, Pastor, if your congregants are not in production, they are just in consumption, the result of this church will be very clear. Wealth creation or production or, uh, or multiplication in our own terms is an art of production, not consumption. We were created to have dominion and multiply, which is production. Yeah? Genesis, Genesis 1, verse 28. Genesis 1, verse 28. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion, over the fish of the sea, and over the fall of the, uh, of the air, and over every, every living thing that moves upon the earth. That is how God blessed us. And God blessed them. And God blessed us. That's how we were blessed. Eh? And said to them, be fruitful. Are we fruitful? And multiply. Are you multiplying? It means as we consume the fish, we must also find a way how the fish can be multiplied. Isn't it? Eh? If we eat all the chicken in the world and we don't rear new ones, they will, will, not, will no longer be eating chicken, right? <laughs> it's a principle, it's a kingdom principle that production must be ahead of consumption. 
Production must be ahead of consumption. So if you're using more money than you're making, you're already negating that principle. And the fate is clear. Replenish the earth. Replenish. You even leave it better. Replenish the earth.